thank you for joining us. I'm Wilson Stripling. Welcome to another season of At Issue, where we discuss and debate the issues facing the state of Mississippi and how these issues impact you. It's the second week of the 2019 legislative session. Lawmakers are drafting general bills and amendments, and Governor Phil Bryant has given his legislative charge in the annual State of the State Address. MPB's political analysts, Republican Austin Barber and Democrat Brandon Jones, will join us in a moment to share their insight. But first, leaders of the Senate and House talk about about their priorities this session. Prior to the start of the session, Republican House Speaker Philip Gunn told reporters that topping his list is protecting young victims of human trafficking. That's probably going to be the top issue for us this year is trying to make inroads and to prove the area of human trafficking. Or stop human trafficking, I should say. Uh, other items, uh, mental health courts is something we've passed in the House many times. That's another issue we're going to come back with again. I think it's passed pretty much overwhelmingly, if not unanimously, each time we brought it up. Something that will help the mentally ill. Uh, we want to try to fill the teacher supply fund, which has not been funded fully, I think, in, in quite some time. We have made improvements in that fund, as I understand it, and have, have doubled the amount that, that has been put there, but I think there's room to add to that. Uh, we've talked about trying to eliminate some of the subject area tests, which one of the things we hear repeatedly is there's too much testing going on, too much testing going on. So we're trying to find some relief there. Uh, another item is the rural broadband issue. As you know, that's a hot topic of conversation. We are searching right now for a way to try to bring the parties together that are involved in that. There are a lot of different entities that have an interest there and uh, we're trying to evaluate exactly how to make that happen. The House appears to be moving quickly to find solutions for rural broadband access. House Bill 366, also referred to as the Mississippi Broadband Enabling Act, passed the House this week by a vote of 115 to 3. It would allow electric cooperatives in the state to offer high-speed Internet service to customers in rural areas. On the Senate side, Republican Lieutenant Governor Tate Reeves says the state revenue is solid. Speaking at the Stennis Capital Press Forum, he said there are a few items they will consider. Well, our priority is going to be pay raises for teachers. Um, the uh, ask for the public employees retirement system, um, both general fund and special fund dollars, uh, is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 to 80 million dollars. Um, I think you'll see, you'll, you'll certainly see us look for um, opportunities to uh, invest in uh, things such as state-owned office buildings through our capital expense fund. I think you'll also see uh, an effort uh, this year to um, continue what we had committed to do in uh, a couple of uh, sessions ago as it relates to the um, capital complex improvement district. Uh, the taxpayers of Mississippi have an enormous amount of capital invested in downtown Jackson. And as you heard me give a speech last year, uh, Mississippi is going to be better served to keep our best and our brightest young people at home if we have an urban area that is thriving and a downtown area that is thriving. And we think that uh, uh, investments uh, to protect what we have already invested in downtown area uh, makes good sense. The Democratic caucus, including members of both the House and the Senate, is pushing a six-point agenda. Senator Derek Simmons of Greenville says criminal justice, health care, and public education are issues they've been standing behind for years. This year, we will continue to fight for equal funding for those things that we care about and the things that the people of Mississippi care about, uh, not just for 2019, but certainly for the last decade or since 2011, there are some things that you will hear from Leader Barry in a minute that we have been pushing. We will continue to push for equal funding, uh, I mean for more funding for education, more funding for mental health. You will see that the legislative Democrats, not just in an election year, we will continue to fight for our state employees. We will continue to fight for our teachers. We will continue to fight for more dollars for infrastructure to fight for our cities and our counties. So it's simple. The legislative Democrats will continue in 2019 to do what we've always done here at this Capitol, year after year after year. For some reason, in 2019, 
we hear that the governor is considering expanding Medicaid or some proposal that would include expanding Medicaid. Legislative Democrats have fought for that since 2011 and we will continue to fight for that. We are hearing that you are, there is a possibility that we may have teacher pay raise or state employees pay raise, pay raises. We have fought for that since 2011 and in 2019, it will not be different. Legislative Democrats would do that. Governor Phil Bryant delivered his eighth and final State of the State address to a joint session of the legislature on Tuesday night. The governor talked a lot about education, touting his administration's success in third grade literacy, early childhood education, community college training, and public charter schools. The governor is recommending lawmakers pass legislation to increase teacher pay, what he says would be the first raise for educators in five years. He is also calling for the Mississippi Safe School Act to fund protection services on school campuses across the state. We understood the innate ability of all children to learn and grow and unlock their own potential if only given the opportunity. We also need literacy to be the foundation of success. That is why we worked so hard together to pass the Literacy-Based Promotion Act in 2013. The concept of the bill was basic but revolutionary. It, requir it required reading proficiency by the third grade in order to ensure the opportunity for continued success and achievement both in the classroom and life beyond the schoolhouse door. My fellow Mississippians, the numbers show us the policy is working and to great effect. In 2011, only 54% of Mississippi's third graders were reading with proficiency. With the implementation of the third grade literacy policy, we have dramatically improved students' opportunities and thus the future of our state. In the last testing cycle, 93% of Mississippi's third graders were reading with proficiency. I believe that time and results will record your passage of this act as the single most successful reform to public education in Mississippi's history. Further testament to the effectiveness of this policy is displayed by Mississippi's third and fourth grade students who are now performing so well, we are second in the nation for reading improvements. Our older students are also improving their performance and are becoming better prepared to enter the workforce or further their education. As national chairman of Jobs for American Graduates, I saw not just Mississippi, but an entire nation struggling with high school dropout rates. When we first met here in 2012, our graduation rate was 75%. Today, 83% of our high school students are graduating the highest number in Mississippi's history. Of all the educational reforms proposed by politicians and all the public posturing by those wanting to be the education champion, none has done more than the teachers. They alone have been there in the classroom, often in challenged and overwhelmed by circumstances beyond their control, teaching still, inspiring still, and leading children to rise together. Our gratitude to these classroom heroes and the essential value of public ed education are why we passed a $100 million teacher pay raise in 2014 and why I call on the members of this body to join me in giving teachers their second pay raise in five years. Send me a bill to authorize a pay raise for those most critical guardians of Mississippi's future and I will sign it. Unfortunately, a problem exists in our schools today that threaten children of all ages. It has become commonly known as the active shooter. Our schools, which once were a haven of security, have become a place of potential violence. 
Now, to help protect our students and those who teach them, I will ask you to pass a comprehensive plan to keep our school children safe. The recommendations come from a year-long study for effective results. If you will pass and fund the Mississippi Safe School Act, our parents and teachers and administrators will be allowed to care for our children in a safe and protected environment. Democrats were disappointed the governor excluded any mention of expanding Medicaid, despite a rumor that he may have been considering it. Representative David Beria of Bay St. Louis with the Democratic response. Medicaid expansion in Mississippi would mean that the state's working poor would be provided no-cost health care under the state's Medicaid program. This would include approximately 300,000 people who work but do not receive health care through their employers and are not currently insured. Expanding the program to include working people will cover those Mississippians who fall into the gap, and we should do it right away. If we were to expand Mississippi's Medicaid program, the state will receive $9 from the federal treasury for every dollar we put up, $10 billion in total over the next decade. In addition to being a great deal for our state and the right thing to do for our citizens, Expanding Medicaid would stem the bleeding experienced by our rural hospitals, many of which are closing due to budget problems. It would also lead to the creation of an estimated eight to 9,000 high-paying jobs in the medical field. Medicaid expansion is what is commonly referred to as a no-brainer. You have also likely heard the governor brag about our low unemployment rate. However, that statistic alone doesn't tell the story of our economy. Mississippi had a labor participation rate of just 56 percent, the lowest of any state besides West Virginia, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. The statistic refers to the number of people in the labor force who are either working or looking for a job, divided by the population age 16 and over. In other words, just over half of the state's eligible workers are active in the economy. Corey Miller, an economic analyst with the University Research Center, a division of the State Institutions of Higher Learning, has said that a low labor participation rate is a sign that our economy is not performing as well as other states. According to Miller, what it really says is people don't have the skill set to participate in the economy we're in now. Legislative Democrats will also support election and criminal justice reforms and economic justice measures, such as an increase in the minimum wage in the 2019 session. Legislation has already been drafted and filed to make it easier for citizens to register and to exercise their right to vote, to ensure workers are paid a living wage, and to decrease prison populations and curb abuses in the criminal justice system. Mississippi Democrats are ready, willing, and able to work together with Republicans to move our state forward. We just need for our colleagues across the aisle to engage with us around our common goal of improving our state for all Mississippians. At issue, producer Ashley Norwood was at the Capitol on Tuesday night and has Republican and Democratic legislators' reactions to the State of the State Address. Oh, I thought the governor did a great job reflecting on many of the accomplishments that not only have occurred this term, but also over his eight years or seven years plus in the, uh, in the governor's office. And uh, I think he spent a lot of time kind of going over those things. He also gave uh, a path, his path for this year and some of the accomplishments that he wants to achieve and he hopes the legislature achieves this year. So I thought it was a very good address. So some of those items that he talked about, school safety and teacher pay raise, are those some things that you're that, that are topping your priority list yes. as well? Those two. I, in fact, I was on the school safety task force, so I'm definitely interested in that measure, and I'm excited to hear him discuss the teacher pay raise. I think that's something that's also very good for the state. I'm just hoping that we will be able to find all of those funds that he has assured us are available, and it says to me that those things that we need to get done can be done because we have no reason now because we have the funds and we know we have them because the governor has just told us that we have we have these funds and I was just really elated that we have those funds available so we can do what we should have done we can give the teachers a raise they should have had we can give the state employees the raise that we should have done and we can there are just so many things we can fix up within our state because re regardless of what we do all of us know that it takes money 
to get the things done that we need to get done. And I hate that we've been losing so many teachers. And with this, we should not be doing that any longer. Of course, I do the budget. So uh, right now, we've got some good growth in our revenues. But uh, we have several big ticket items that we're looking at that can take a lot of that money real quick. The first one is our retirement system is requesting a pretty big increase on the employer side. I'm um, not sure what that amounts. I've seen different, different numbers, but I mean, it's 50, 60 million dollars that, that it would take out of the general fund. Uh, then there's a lot of discussion at all levels about teacher pay raise. You've heard the, the governor say that, the lieutenant governor has uh, also you know, said that he's trying to look at that. Uh, and then on top of that, the, an employee pay raise for all the other employees around the state. Uh, through the years, state employees, de depending on the agency, might have gotten different amounts of pay raise. So when you look at overall, we, we want to tie it in with, you know, compare, well, who hasn't gotten anything recently? We really want to look at, and I like to focus right now, those our, our people at the lower end of the pay scale. For us, criminal justice reform in Mississippi, we long overdue for that. However, I was disappointed that there was no mention as far as Medicaid expansion. We have about 200,000 people in the state of Mississippi that are in need of health care. Uh, other states are doing it. It's going to bring over a billion dollars a year into the state economy. So I wish the governor had talked a little bit more about uh, the health care issues that we have here going on in the state. He mentioned uh, uh, pay raises for teachers as well as state, state employees. Uh, that's important. Uh, but we don't need to do a, a pay raise uh, just to say we did a pay raise. There need to be a significant pay raise uh, for our, both our teachers as well as our state employees. So let's get straight to the point now with views from both sides of the aisle. Brenda Jones is a Democrat and he is an attorney with the Beria Jones Law Firm and is a former member of the House. Austin Barber is a Republican national strategist. He is the founding partner of the Clearwater Group. Good to have you all back with us for this uh, new season of that issue. Thank Good you. To be here. Let me start with you, Brandon. Let me get your impressions of the State of the State address. Well, we have to acknowledge that Governor Bryant gives a good speech, probably one of our best speech makers in all of Mississippi politics, and that's probably been the case ever since he got into public office. Um, you heard him kind of throughout the off season and leading up to this speech signal a tone shift on issues like Medicaid expansion. You heard him talk about teacher pay raises, which has been a legislative priority for Democrats in the legislature for five years now. They filed bills. Um, I'm sure that astute observers of Mississippi politics are going to draw a connection between that change of thought and the fact that it's an election year. Mm -hmm. But I think what you heard Democrats saying is, we welcome that. If it's a good idea, election year or not, we'll roll out the welcome mat to try to see that that happens. Um, I share Bryant Clark's disappointment that Medicaid expansion didn't make its way into the speech. I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point. But um, look, the graduation rate, some of those other statistics, not bad. The job rate, probably slightly misleading, but overall, um, this is a guy who knows how to talk to folks. Austin? Yeah, he does, and, and uh, Brandon's right. He, he's a very good speaker. He knows how to talk to his audience, no matter whether his, where his audience is, legislators or business leaders or folks at a barbecue. He, he knows how to talk to them. He does a really good job. He's, he's a very gifted speaker. Um, he's, he, he should be commended for that. But listen, I mean, um, one of the one of the legislators that that we just heard from talked about this was a look back over what he's done the last seven years. He's got one year left, one more session. That's a very important session. There's a lot of big issues that are going to come up. Uh, surprisingly big issues that you typically don't see during an election year, um, even if some may be seen as more politically popular as others. So obviously, he you know he wants he wants the legislature to look at. Uh, teacher pay raise, as, as we talked about, criminal justice reform. Uh, no question criminal justice reform is an issue that is bipartisan. It's an issue that Republicans for a number of years have been trying to uh, talk about and work on at the national level. Obviously, the president is, is very much in favor of that. 
Um, Cong Congress is looking at it. So I'm, I'm not surprised to see that the governor is seeing this and knowing that we've got to do something about criminal justice reform in, in Mississippi. And uh, Brandon, you mentioned Medicaid expansion. Where the, the uh, Most Democrats, the governor in particular, have been uh, adamantly opposed to Medicaid expansion in Mississippi. Where did this rumor come from uh, that the governor might be warming up to the idea and might reveal that in, in the speech, which he did not do? Yeah, well, you know, the governor has a big office and has a lot of staff members. And I think that in staff members talking to agencies and elsewhere about what expansion might look like, some of the different triggers that have to be pulled in order to make it work, um, kind of got these rumors going. Uh, some journalists picked up on that and wrote about it. Um, they, there's another kind of sense that we might have reached the tipping point where it was no longer quite as hazardous for a Republican to step off into expansion because virtually every state has done that now. You know, Mike Pence, who's our vice president, um, he did what they call skinny expansion in Indiana. I noticed this morning that John Bell Edwards in our neighboring state, uh, he, he tweeted this morning that since Medicaid expansion passed in Louisiana, Louisiana has not seen the closure of one rural hospital. We've probably closed a rural hospital in Mississippi since this show started. So I thought we were kind of past the point of making much about that, and maybe it was the right time to go ahead and do this. But interestingly, uh, the governor kind of shot off of that to the extent it was ever a serious consideration. And we heard Tate Reeves strike a very ardent tone this week where he said, no Medicaid expansion today, today uh, you know, yesterday or for the rest of time. So I don't know. I, I, I think it's... A, an idea whose time has come. We know the economic benefits, and I think it's a real shame that we're letting a billion dollars a year stay on the table. Are, Democrat, are, are Republicans behind the scenes uh, warming to the idea at all, Austin? No, I mean, Brandon talks about Louisiana. I mean, Louisiana's got massive budget issues, a Democrat governor. Um, I mean, Republicans are, are I, I do not see them getting behind expanding Obamacare in Mississippi. I, I just don't think that'll happen. I don't think it'll happen this year. Um, there'll have to be some kind of radical solution of how to do it. Um, in a fiscally responsible way, which I don't see right now for the future. But listen, the good thing is Republicans are able to take advantage um, of the situation that our state is in, in a, from a fiscal standpoint right now. If you go back and you think about the last eight years, this is the first time I, I want to say in the history of our state that the, that the Republican Party has controlled for, for eight years the governor's mansion, the lieutenant governor's office and the speaker of the house. Haley Barber was governor. Billy McCoy was speaker for, for four years. So I don't think this has ever happened. In this eight years, Republicans have a lot of things to be proud of. We talk a lot about education on the show. Uh, this was already brought up. I got to bring it up again because it's a big deal. We've got our high school students are graduating at 84 percent right now. It's the highest it's ever been in our state history. You know, it's it's finally at the national average, but it's a great sign. Let's let's continue to do that. Our kids are, are are not just being passed from third grade to fourth grade. There's a policy that was put in place by Republican leadership to make sure that they can read at some minimal requirement that, that wasn't even there before. We've got our teachers that are getting paid. I think they're going to if we, if we can pass. Um, a teacher pay raise this year. They obviously got a, a, a pay raise in 2015, uh, nearly $10,000 more um, th than they were when, when Republicans took over in 2011. And very quickly, the state economy. Um, revenue estimates were exceeded by $90 million in the first half of this fiscal year. The best tax collecting months are the ones that haven't even happened yet, when, when more tax are coming. So you could see more than $200 million above revenue estimates for tax collections, which can be used to do things like a teacher pay raise, a state employee pay raise if they deem to do that. So I think these are all the good things that Republicans have done in these eight years. And finally, they're, they're figuring out way what can we do with this, these extra dollars to help lives, to help people out there be better in, in Mississippi than they were. I think the mistake that folks like me and Austin make and that politicians make is that it's always one thing or it's always the other. Um, Republicans really get exercised about debt whenever Democrats are in office. They don't seem to care about it at all whenever they are running the show. In Mississippi, our debt, our total bond indebtedness has ballooned $4 billion in those eight years that Austin just mentioned. That's a 10% increase over that period of time. Our indebtedness, our debt related to PERS has increased $16 billion. That's a 35% increase. 
we still have no comprehensive infrastructure plan as roads and bridges are constantly being closed and we're having to find alternative ways to get to the library and to the schoolhouse. And again, healthcare is at a place of real calamity in this state. And there's no simple fix to any of those things. So I would want to stop the ticker tape parade a little short of saying mission oh, accomplished. Yeah, There's a lot sure. of work to be done. And I'm not saying that. You know yeah, that. I, yeah. What I'm saying is I, I, I think that there are a lot of there are a lot of um, there are a lot of facts that say Republicans have done a lot of good things in the last eight years. We still got a long way to go. There's no question. They passed an infrastructure plan last year. Let's see how you know effective it possibly is. We need to do more things on education. We're headed down the right direction. We got to bring more jobs. The Amazon in North Mississippi was was a good good thing. We've cut unemployment from nine and a half percent to four point seven percent. Long way to go. No banners being raised, yeah. but let's get let's continue to get more good things done this session. Well and look it looks like we might have a chance to do big things. I mean it, it, at least at least to work on a teacher pay raise. Hopefully right. that amount will be good. Um, I do wonder who in the governor's office called Nissan to say don't announce the seven hundred layoffs that they just announced before the state of the state. It's it's a mixed bag out there, I guess, is the point. But we're smart to take advantage of the time to try to pass what can be passed. Yeah, of course, the Nissan thing, the car industry, you know, th throughout the world, you know, you've got GM, you've got uh, Tesla, you've got lots of folks that are shuttering. I, I think the Nissan will be a small blip on the radar for a company that's done great things for 15 years. Let's hope so. We're going to let that be the last word, Boston. Thank you both. We are out of time. Don't forget, you can watch this program on our website, mpbonline.org slash issue. And we invite you to join us again next Friday. Friday evening right here on MPB TV for another edition of At Issue. Good night.